Welcome and um, happy Wednesday, happy St. Patrick's Day. We are live with Kate um, from Help Hope Live, and I will introduce her here in a minute. But if you're tuning in live with us, I am Kelsey Allen, the program director with Gilda's Club Quad Cities. If you're not familiar what we do, we provide free services to anyone impacted by cancer, whether you're the individual going through cancer, a family or friends, or even children. Um, and teens, we provide services to everyone. So everybody welcome and um, thank you for joining us today. And like I said, I have Kate with us from Help Hope Live and I'm gonna turn it over to her to introduce herself. Thanks, Kelsey. <clears throat> I'm going to share my screen. <clears throat> um, Okay, so hi everyone. Um, again, my name is Kate and I'm the outreach representative with Hope Hope Live. Um, thank you all for having me and joining us. Hope Hope Live is we were founded in 1983 by a heart transplant doctor and his wife and they wanted to help their patients um, be able to afford their transplant procedures. So they began fundraising amongst their family and friends. And as an organization, we were originally called the National Transplant Assistance Fund, but since we now um, include catastrophic injury and illness, our name changed to Help Hope Live. Our mission is to support community-based fundraising for people with unmet medical expenses and related costs due to cell and organ transplants, catastrophic injuries, and catastrophic illnesses. And what we do is write in our name, help ease the financial burden of a medical crisis, provide hope at a time of overwhelming need, and support patients to live life as fully as possible. Some of our history of help, we have over 37 years of service and we've helped our clients raise over $150 million to go towards their medical expenses and related costs. And now we're assisting more conditions than ever. So that includes cancer, rare diseases, COVID, sickle cell, autism, and even more. So we're really excited to be able to help more individuals with that um, have medical expenses. So our advantage at Help Hope Live is that we provide personal support. So each client is assigned a client service coordinator and that coordinator is available to the client to help them plan fundraiser events and just help them through the whole entire process of fundraising. Um, we also are able to pay bills directly so our clients can focus on their health and recovery. And as a nonprofit status organization, donations are tax deductible. We also have the opportunity for matching grants if other organizations or companies are interested in that. And we also um, maintain discretion over the funds that are raised. So our clients don't have to worry about losing their Medicaid or Medicare or any other asset-based assistance that they might have. So the funds raised do not go directly to the client. It's not considered um, an asset to our clients. It, we maintain discretion over the funds like I mentioned, and we disperse the funds based on a fund request form, which I will talk about uh, in a little bit. So all of our campaigns are medically verified. So this verification can come from a social worker, a financial coordinator, a physician, or a nurse. And it's just a document that is signed by them and sent back to us at Help Hope Live. And this document just proves that funds are being raised in honor of a real person with a real need. A medical professional has confirmed this need and funds will only be used to cover medical um, and related expenses. And so once we receive that medical verification, a blue check mark appears next to, um, their, uh, next to their profile. So that um, shows that they um, have been for sure medically verified by um, a medical professional. 
And this is an example of one of our campaign pages and how they look on our website. So a client service coordinator can help clients um, write out their story. If they need help, um, they can add pictures, they can add updates to these campaign pages. And all, all of our campaign pages are able to be viewed on a smartphone. So this is how most of the donations come through and it's really easy to make it really personalized. And so this is um, some of the things that fundraising can help pay for. So those include insurance premiums, deductibles, co-pays, hospital bills, and lab work, food travel and lodging if, um, if travel is necessary for treatment, three months of emergency living assistance. So that includes mortgage, rent, and utilities, follow-up care, caregiver expenses, medication, service dogs, and medical marijuana. So those are just some examples of what um, fundraising can assist with. And so this is a fund request form that I mentioned previously. So this is submitted by the client or someone previously designated by the client and it's completed and sent to the email that's in yellow and that goes directly to our finance team. So it gets processed and based on what's included on the fund request form, we're able to direct deposit if a client has already paid a bill and they would like reimbursement. We can pay directly to vendor if the bill hasn't been paid yet. And we also have a lot of partner discounts on our website that we encourage our clients to just take a look at because they can be, um, they can be really helpful when, um, when looking for certain products. This is, um, these are some of the things that our client services coordinators can help with. So those include press releases, um, we can create flyers and business cards, social campaigns like Facebook fundraisers, we can create all those for our clients and outreach to businesses for in-kind donations. So our client service coordinators really work with our clients to decide what's best for them and what event or you know, what type of fundraiser works best for their community and um, kind of meets them where they are. And these are some of our partners in HOPE. So they include Walgreens and um, some adaptive clothing partnerships that we have. And so Walgreens is a partnership that allows Walgreens to directly mail Hope, Hope Live and then ship the medications to the patient so they don't have to go to the pharmacy each time they need a refill. And the client would contact our finance team if they're interested in participating and they would get them all set up with this. And then this is Josh Basile. He is a disability rights lawyer out of Washington, DC. And he is a free resource for our clients on how to seek employment without losing key benefits. Um, so he's really helpful for some of our clients who want to return to work, are unsure how to kind of navigate that. And uh, there's a survey on our ready to work page that our clients can fill out and that goes directly to Josh. So he knows how to, um, <clears throat> he knows how to work with them best. So he's a really helpful resource <clears throat> for our for our clients who are able to return to work maybe a few years after their, uh, after their treatment and procedures. And we recently created um, some resource directories. <clears throat> They're broken down into transplant, injury, and illness. So this is a really good resource for some of our clients who might need additional resources, additional support, um, maybe additional financial assistance. So these are really helpful for, um, for our clients who might need something more than fundraising. And so one of our clients, Doug, he was diagnosed with leukemia in 2012. And in 2013, 
Doug received the gift, the gift of life from Ben Elliott, a complete stranger who had signed up to be a bone marrow donor through Be The Match. And they actually got to meet, which was great. Um, in 2016, the two families first met. And then in November of 2019, they reunited at uh, the Minnesota versus Penn State football game to celebrate. So he's one of our clients um, with a really great success story. And so we also compiled a few questions that we get most often to um, be included in this presentation. One of the questions we get quite often is how do I get started? So we created five easy steps on how to start fundraising with Help Hope Live. First, a client would contact us for a quick overview. They would receive a welcome packet in the mail or through email complete the application and send it back to us, launch a campaign page with a $25 donation that can come from, um, it can come from anyone, family, friend, themselves. And then once we receive that donation, they can start fundraising within their community. We also have a get started button on our website. And that um, once that is completed, that will, that will prompt a coordinator to give them a call and they can get started that way as well. And what makes Help Hope Live different than other fundraising platforms? So we provide personal coordinators for each client. Uh, we also can provide custom flyers, banners, we can create videos, press releases, media pitches that can go out to their local media and maybe be on the news or have a, a news article written about them, free Facebook fundraisers that we can set up, donations are tax deductible, and there's no impact on uh, Medicaid, Medicare, or SSI. What made our clients choose Help Hope Live? So five mere reasons include donations are tax deductible, nonprofit status encourages trust for donors, medical professionals often recommend us, Hope Hope Live manages all the funds, and fundraising wouldn't jeopardize their asset-based assistance. Are there any fees involved? So we do have a small 5% fee on all donations, and that's just to keep our organization operating and the lights on. And there is a small credit card fee for online donations, but everything else to our clients is completely free. What if I'm nervous about starting fundraising or asking my friends and family for help? So we have the option to create a YouTube video for our clients and it's personalized for each client it comes with an ask from our executive director. Um, this can be really easily shared on Facebook or any social media through email. Um, there's a click to donate button. And it's just a really easy way to get someone's um, story and message across on why they really, why they really need to be fundraising um, and why they need your help. What kinds of fundraisers should I do? So some in-person fundraisers include, um, we've seen clients do poker tournaments, polar plunges, golf tournaments, have yard sales, restaurant percentage of sales night. So we've seen a lot of different fundraisers be successful and some clients do an annual fundraiser so they can continue, um, continue fundraising and continue that tradition of fundraising amongst their family and friends and some virtual fundraisers because of social distancing and things not being open. We've seen some clients do photo contests, have watch parties, um, have bingo or trivia, um, give out gift cards and uh, do some gaming events. And these are just a few of our quotes on our website from um, 
from clients and some things we've achieved. Um, and this is more for medical professionals, but if anyone um, is interested in brochures um, or a webinar for any other organization, just let me know. And then this is my contact information. And I'm always available if anyone has any additional questions, things that come up later, I'm always available to, to answer any of those. Thank you, Kate, so much for this information. I am just like blown away by this resource. Obviously, we love to share resources and information with our members and just the general public. And this is just a really great resource that is available to our members and anyone in our community. And it just feels very customized and somebody mm -hmm. there, like the coordinator to be able to help you walk through this process because fundraising and um, raising money can be kind of intimidating just so to have a resource there to help you out is really great. So we so yes. appreciate your time today to share this resource with our members. And obviously we have her contact information here. Um, if anybody needs the information, they can always reach out to us. But I don't believe we have any questions on the Facebook Live, so I am going to stop the live video. Thank you, everybody, for participating, and we'll just go back to our Zoom. Everyone have a wonderful day.